Back at a sold out Reunion Arena where the Laker Express having a difficult time shaking the Mavericks. They lead it by only one, 57 to 56. You know, the very first superstar that the Dallas Mavericks acquired was Ford Mark Aguirre out of DePaul University. But as much as this team relies on him, there are times when the controversial Aguirre is often misunderstood. Leslie Visser has more in this report on the man and the myth. Perkins is going to come back into the ball game, and Aguirre will sit down. He's going off this uh, floor a little bit gingerly right here. I don't think Mark wants out at this point. And he doesn't want to be on that bench. He's looking up at the crowd. Mark wondering, what am I doing over here right now? He's hot. Yep. It's a scene that's becoming increasingly familiar to Mark Aguirre, the end of the bench at the end of the game. To be here seven years and go through the... the um, I won't call it abuse, but the um, things that have been done to me in Dallas, um, and we finally get an opportunity like this, I don't want to be on the bench when, when it's time to go. You know, I think that um, I paid my dues enough. He was the cornerstone of the expansion Mavericks, the NBA's top draft pick, and the man who would carry Dallas from obscurity to respectability. But for Mark Aguirre this season, Dallas has a new coach with a new system and a maturing team. So he's no longer the NBA's lone star in the state of Texas. Five good men or eight good men are a lot uh, more difficult to defend than one man shooting the ball. And uh, this is what I have tried to do here. Anytime you're a, a, a great player, you want to be out on the basketball floor to, to make the difference in a win or a loss. And it kind of hurts you and hurts your confidence and it hurts your ego to be sitting on the bench because you, you feel you're not being depended upon uh, to get out there and do the job. While the pain of adjusting to a new role has been difficult, it's been equally hard accepting negative headlines that have often dogged him. It's something that started uh, a few years ago, um, and um, it'll be with me, and it'll continue to be with me uh, throughout my career, and I know that now, so I have to um, accept that. For Mark Aguirre, frustration seems to be part of the game. On the court, he's emotional, enigmatic. But regardless of his public perception, his closest friends know a different man. The type of person that you see playing a basketball game is not necessarily the type of person that that individual is. The other side is unique. And he's a, 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 a really a for real person. You know, he comes straight at you and tells you what's on his mind. My goal is to win a championship, and that's what I'm after. Regardless of what's said or what anybody do, that's what I'm after. I might be, you know, uh, the most terrible guy in the NBA or whatever it is, but um, I'm going to get that. Now, while Mark Aguirre wants badly to be in the game when it's on the line, I think he's shown his maturity with his good bench behavior and team-first attitude when he's not in there. Now, earlier today, President Reagan arrived in Moscow for his summit meeting with Mikhail Gorbachev. And while these two meters are hoping to bring the East and West closer together, the NBA has taken its own step in that regard. Arvidas Sabonis, a Soviet star, just may wind up playing in the NBA.